reason we have a celebration of the ancestors is we'd like for our children to be able to showcase what they've been learning uh, along through the year. As we, some people know, we started this African ancestor wall because we were not um, satisfied with the African history that we were seeing in, seeing in the local schools. We see a lot of colonial history, we see a lot of European history, but very little African history. So our children come through the wall uh, by the hundreds now. We've probably had several thousand through here. And we get a chance to take them through, explain, help to build their knowledge and confidence of self. And then every year, we showcase what they're doing to the public and to other students and to everyone who's interested so they know this is the kind of uh, youngsters that we are developing. As we always say, we have to develop the Africans we need to solve the problems we have, and we know that's our children. Uh, yes, well, the main activity is what I just mentioned. We have excursions every, any school that wants to have excursions, we bring them. Sometimes there's 20 students, sometimes there's several hundred. Uh, we've had all kinds of groups. It's free of charge. All you have to do is get here. And, um, and we go through the 92 large portraits of African men and women in history. So our children, get good insight into what their potential really is because they get a good insight into what their history really is. I think the significance now is, is giving young people and uh, even their parents and older people a place to come to not only learn the history but to meet other people who come here too. And I really think sometimes that's becoming the most powerful thing about it is the people who are meeting each other here and of course the students who are impressing their parents and, and teachers and friends here. So I think it's becoming a point where people can come together, uh, learn history, but also learn from each other, develop relationships, so hopefully we can build some Pan-Africanism that actually represents power. My name is Aboma Johnson, and Jerry Johnson is my husband. And this is the fourth annual anniversary that we're having today. For me, this is my house. I organize this. Everything that you see here is something that myself and my husband put it together today, because we're trying to build the consciousness upon the young ones. Build nations that have enough power to survive in the world and not be ruled and run by other nations. Marcus Garvey is uh, the one we look up to. Marcus, Marcus Garvey said, what man has done, man can do. And so he knows our history, he knows our potential, and he knows this world. And he knows if you do not have a powerful national entity somewhere, it's got to be on the African continent because Outside of Africa, you don't have the population, you don't have the resources, you don't have the land. So this is the only place where we actually have those ingredients and we can build something with it. All we need is the orientation, socialization, determination, and confidence. And that's really, really what we're striving for. And we're striving to put it in the youngsters so that when, it come, when they grow with it, uh, we don't have to work so hard to uh, orient them that way. We're trying to teach our young children our history, our culture. So when they grow, they know their history and their culture. So if you, if you hear about African ancestral wall, you know we're trying to build the consciousness. 
Okay. It is important because you know we are Africans Anything and they need to know their history. history. Okay. African Americans from the diasporas are like ourselves. We are all together and we all need to know our history. Oh, the selection process is uh, interesting. Basically, we look for uh, several. I basically made a long list of characteristics, attributes that I wanted the students to learn. So you see things like courage, uh, leadership, warriorship, creativity, uh, all of these types of things. And then we basically find ancestors in history and map them back to those attributes. So sometimes you'll see yeah. Africans on the wall who you've never heard of, but they really have an attribute that I want their children to know about. And sometimes you won't see people you expect to see because we already have several people uh, that are demonstrating that attribute or that characteristic to the students. So, but the main thing is we want to have the full range of African uh, talents, characters, uh, full range of African potentials uh, available for the children to learn and to see and hopefully to begin to internalize it themselves. So I was raised in the U.S. and uh, I come from Los Angeles and you know um, African people don't have any power in the U.S. you know you see people on TV who made some money and this kind of thing, but that should never be confused with power. Um, anyone who's been watching the news today sees that they can take billions of dollars away from someone like Kanye West in a matter of days. So that means that they can take it in a matter of days. We never had it in the first place. So we don't have power. We have some people with money as long as they're behaving. So we need to, so those are my experiences living through that in the US, watching as I travel around the world, find that African people are on the bottom in places like Brazil and South America, and even in certain respects on the bottom here in our own countries. So we have a lot of work to do, and it's not an American thing that drove me here. It's an African condition that we find ourselves in around the world that drove me here because I know that this is the place that we're going to have to be to bring it all together and bring our sovereign power back. Well, I was in the military for a while. I worked in aerospace for a while. But all those things I was doing, you know, you, you have to work somewhere. But my heart was always uh, more in the building and being involved with the things on the continent. But it took a while for me to understand the potential of the continent because what we are taught, what we are taught is that the best thing that ever happened, um, so those the best things that ever happened to us as African people in the U.S. was we were brought there as slaves. And now a lot of people here in Africa think that was a good thing that happened to us because they don't know what the common African people in the U.S. deal with. So we have a lot to do. I visited Africa a lot before I actually moved there, so I didn't have many big surprises. Um, I was surprised how bad the curriculum was and how much control uh, the European narrative, uh, how much of the European narrative of history and social order, uh, they really, really have control of that. And uh, I thought we had a little bit more control internally than we do, uh, but it seems that we don't. So we're working to change that too.
my message uh, to the Africans in the diaspora would be to search for activities that you can engage in, whether there or any or here or anywhere else, that can empower the young people to know who they are and really start putting Africa at the center of, center of your future plans, if not your personal future plans, then the future plans of your children and grandchildren. Because at the end of the day, this is the only thing that we have. This is the only thing that we will ever have. So let's get busy uh, making it what we want it to be. Kavilan Kujil Jordan. Come with my, my wife and my boys um, to enjoy the festivities and see the ancestor wall and uh, other other activities going on. This is our first time coming. We just we just moved here just three weeks now. This was a beautiful thing to see the children um, uh, give an account of uh, of history as well, with the ancestors. Um, it's it's just good to have the fellowship as we remember our ancestors. When the kids uh, gave a depiction of Bob Marley, uh, Fela, and, and others, it was, it was very nice. It was very informative, very educational. It shows our, our progress, where we come from, our possibilities um, then and now. But it also lets us know that this work's still to be done and we should be a part of the work. My name is Ama Indy Jordan, and I think today's program has been absolutely wonderful. I love seeing all of the presentations from the children, the fact that they learned all of this information and memorized it speaks to their intelligence and speaks to our intelligence overall as a people. And I think that this is a very important event for all of us in the diaspora. My name is Dee Brown. I am from Augusta, Georgia. I have a tutoring business in Augusta, Georgia, um, where we teach from an African-centered perspective. This is my second year coming back for the to the African um, ancestral celebration. That come back every year. For, well, I'm trying to make it a tradition to come back every year. It's good to see the youth. They really doing an awesome job when they're. Um, portraying their ancestors. I'm amazed. I think every community should be doing this. It should be packed out here. I mean, it's a lot of people here, but we have room for more. Favorite part of the event is just hearing the youth. Um, I saw a group, it was a little girl. She was very powerful in her speech. I'm trying to remember who she was speaking on, but she did a great job. She did. It is important that we all know where we come from. Um, a lot of people don't know the experience. When we're in the United States, they give us a totally different picture of what Africa is. And the best way to get the correct knowledge of that is to come. Everybody come back, come home, come visit and learn. My name is Betty Lewis. I'm from Hampton, Virginia, in the United States of America. I, I'm also known as Ya and Aseye here in Ghana. I've come to the Ancestral Wall to enjoy the program and I've enjoyed it tremendously. I'm here because I believe in our youth and our freedom of uh, the African nation and the, uh, well, all our black people are around the diaspora. And this is wonderful that all people have come today to celebrate with uh, Jerry his uh, anniversary. And not only that, but to celebrate the children who are in his program, because if we teach them, they certainly will be our next leaders and we need to give them that. Hi, my name is Jerry Johnson. You're watching Face to Face Africa, the premier 
global black voice.